there's a pretty interesting group of people in our community currently. Um, some business titans, politicians, celebrities, pretty beautiful people. So if you want to be part of that group. <laughs> <laughs> I think Miami's gonna take over the world. Things are happening in cryptocurrency. I got the captain here. The captain here is gonna show us how to navigate the treacherous waters of NFTs. And we have something serious, a real NFT with real utility. Why don't you introduce yourself? Alex, great being with you here. My name is Michael Simpkins, born and raised in Miami Beach and a partner in 11 Miami and now 11 Crypto which is issue in the 11 Captain's Club NFT. Yes, so in this video, guys, we're gonna go over this mint, this utility mint uh, that I think is very interesting. We're gonna interview Michael here and his life and how he got to where he's at now and how Miami's pretty much gonna take over all the whole entire crypto scene, right? It feels that way, it's on its way. Yep, all right, it's gonna be very interesting. Guys, uh, do us a favor, we're giving away 11 bottles to random people. All you have to do is like this video, leave a comment below, and we're going to give away cases, by the way, right? 11 cases. Okay, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We're going to give away more than just a bottle. party. You know, we're ready. We're getting them ready for a party over there. Exactly. <laughs> um, so all you have to do is uh, follow the 11 Captain Club Discord. We'll leave the link in the description below. Follow them on Twitter. Like this video and leave a comment with your favorite section of, you know, you know, this video or any question you might have. But yeah, so I did some research on you, man. I dove deep. Um, one of the biggest people in Miami. Uh, you definitely have a lot of credibility. You're bringing that credibility to the cryptocurrency space, which I appreciate you for because I've been in the market for a while. Actually, you've been in it before me. So I got in around 2015. So why don't you tell us, uh, you know, when you got in and, and how, how did that look? Okay. Um, yeah, I think you've gone deeper than me, but, but I'm really excited about this journey. So in 2013, um, one of my brothers, David, got me into XRP. Um, I invested in that um, and held it until 2017. I bought it at a third of a penny, um, held on to it until it went up to $3 and something, was looking at the, the price every second, um, and then got out in 2017 and, and did very well with that. Very well, I can tell. That's very, very well. So that's interesting. Your first venture into cryptocurrency, you didn't really buy Bitcoin. You got into XRP. XRP. That, that was the only cryptocurrency I owned until 2017. Wow, that's crazy. And, you, and it seems like you did very well because crypto, you know, XRP is like, you know, you got the XRP army. It's one of the biggest uh, groups and you got out before the big lawsuit. I did, yeah. I got out around a dollar. Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, my, my cryptocurrency journey, I got into Ethereum. It wasn't really Bitcoin too. And it looks like a lot of people typically go that route. Um, and you know, even yourself, um, uh, being where you are, you, you decided to go to altcoin. So it seems like, you know, do you like altcoins with the Bitcoin or what, what's your, what's your take on that? I love Bitcoin and Ethereum uh -huh. and I love certain altcoins. Certain altcoins. Okay. We'll get a little more specific later. All right, so you got into cryptocurrency uh, 2013. Let's talk about a little bit before that. Uh, you've been all over. Uh, I saw that you went to finance school and then law school. Yes. Are you using, like, did you, like, is that how you got into crypto? I know your, your brother told you, but. Um, finance helped with that. I mean, after law school, I practiced law for five years. I was a real estate attorney, 2007, 2008. It was crickets. Like, I went from working 100 hours a week, billing hours, to billing five hours a week, um, kind of twiddling my thumb, thinking about what I was going to do, left the firm in 2008 and started doing real estate investment, and real estate development. Okay. And that turned into that turned into a series of investments, um, in South Florida, mainly Miami beach and in Miami. And I was a big believer in Miami, um, really before the emergence of a lot of the neighborhoods, um, started happening. I mean, back in 2008, it was really all about Miami Beach in terms of um, entertainment and hospitality. The Wynwoods, the Brickles, 
Design District, Coconut Grove weren't really, um, you know, kind of the places they are today in 2022. Mm -hmm. So I and my family believe that Miami would have a uh, emergence and we bought a lot of property in downtown, particularly the Park West neighborhood and the Overtown neighborhood. One of the properties we purchased is where 11 is today. Okay. Wow. That's, that's big. So I think a lot of people already know, but for the people who are, probably don't live in Miami, what is 11? So 11 is a unique nightlife experience. One of the best, by the way. Yeah. It's a uh, nightclub that has theatrics. We have world-class uh, musical performances. It's really a sensory overload. And one of the huge advantages is that it's open 24 hours. That's crazy. So you can uh, go get some 11 vodka. You could get a lot of 11 vodka any time of the day. We're, we're currently operating on limited hours coming out of coronavirus. Yeah. So we close at 9 or 10 a.m. right now. But we will go back to 24 hours. Oh, man, it's cool, man. You get, a, you know, get that morning party in. Yeah. I mean, it just goes on through the night. Do you have a lot of people that stay there? Is, it like, is there any dead hours? Like, what, How does that work? The busiest hours are one o'clock to 7 a.m. 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. That's Miami for you. Yes, absolutely. That's interesting. Um, Where our performers don't go on until 3.30 a.m. typically. That is when the big musical acts play. Interesting. So um, you got the uh, 11 nightclub, um, the ultra nightclub, right? Yes. The ultra experience, sensory overload. Um, but it's much more than that, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it really is more than that. I mean, because it, it started um, as this amazing um, night, nightlife experience. And we started selling baseball hats. And the hats kind of exploded. We were selling millions of dollars a year. We still sell millions of dollars a year in baseball hats. Um, That's crazy. And it really got my partner's Mark Roberts and Dennis Tagore and I thinking like, this is more than a nightclub. You know, we're, we have this lifestyle brand that people really find something that resonates with them, that they want to take home with them, that they want to wear as a badge of honor. And that got us thinking that we can expand beyond um, nightlife. And uh, the first thing we did was create our own vodka. Um, it was through a licensing deal um, that my wife runs the company and um, and has been performing extremely well since its launch about a year and a half ago. Are you just in the United States or are you all over the world? The vodka is currently just in Florida. Uh -huh. It's distributed by Southern Glaciers, which is the biggest liquor distributor in the country. And it's in over a thousand accounts, including every Total Wine, ABC, Big Daddies. It's in a lot of the best restaurants, most of the best restaurants in Miami, cocktail menus all over, and has seen really a, a rapid rise and kind of, um, and is one of the only examples of a hospitality company, you know, uh, going into the spirits industry and having broad appeal. So there's plans to expand nationally, but it's, you got to build up a whole team in each city, so each state, pardon me. So that will happen. But. They have a plan, um, and, and I'm sure their team will execute. I love it. So you've done so many different things. Um, you know, you got the vodka, you got the NFT launch coming soon, which we're going to talk about, guys. Stay, stay tuned. Um, we're going to go over the mint details, the whitelist details, you know, the utility. Uh, you guys know I don't talk about uh, too many things, and when I do, uh, it's very serious, so stay tuned for that. Um, so you started the, the, the brand or the actual nightclub. It turned into a brand. You sold hats. Then you went into vodka. Yep. What, what's, what was after that? Then our biggest success to date was the hotel and residence. So in property we owned across the street from 11 Miami. So this is downtown Miami, very close to the FTX arena. We partnered with a residential condominium developer, PMG, to develop the 11 hotel and residences. So it's a 65 story tower with a Deepak Chopra spa, with four restaurants, four bars and nightclubs, a big day club. And we sold out the 375 units in record time. In about six months, we sold out 100% of the units. It was a you know, $350 million sellout. Wow. 
Why? Why? How? I think that people really wanted a um, fun uh, experience. You know, everyone, especially coming out of COVID and yeah. being isolated, mm -hmm. the idea of this, you know, um, very uh, Vegas and Miami, for lack of a better term, kind of experience really appealed to people. And we did it. And I think people trust the 11 brand also that we deliver on um, really fun experiences. We know how to throw parties and we know how to take care of people, whether it's uh, people that work within the family and the company or whether it's our guests. So people trust the brand. We went for a high end product. It's it's an expensive condominium um, based on a price per foot. But there's a lot of people that want that, that want a high end experience that's fun, that's, you know, no judgments, you know, um, work so hard, you can live play in a hard. Club. You can live in a exciting atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> that's a better way of putting it. And is it, is it rentals or you sold the actual? So we sold each of the condo units uh -huh. and those owners are able to put it in a hotel pool. Okay. So the hotel will function as a hotel. Most of the people that bought it's their second home. They'll come into Miami for a month or two. They'll rent it in the hotel the other 10 months or so. I like it. Um, and, and then we built a second tower since we sold that out. Keep going. As, and then that one is 80% sold. It's 461 units. That one functions as an extended stay. So more people, I think, will be living in that second tower, but they're connected. They're next to each other. Uh, very interesting. And they're right, right by the Club 11, right? Right across the street, on, both on 11th Street. On 11th Street, yep. I, I love it. We should put 11 in the title somewhere or something like that. Just keep keep the theme going. I like it. Um, so you're you're expanding, man. And and uh, why did you like? Why are ne is NFTs the next venture, or did you have something in between there? NFTs are the next venture. Tell me a, a little bit why you're going for the NFT space. So we're really excited about entering the crypto NFT space. Uh, 11 was the first major nightclub to accept cryptocurrency. And we have processed over $5 million in transactions. Our condo was the first pre-development condo project to accept crypto as deposits. So we partnered with FTX. They, they had never done this. We figured out a partnership. So any crypto on their platform, the customer is allowed to make their payment for their unit. And we sold 62 units where our buyers purchased with cryptocurrency. So we were a, uh, I would say we were in the crypto ecosystem in Miami that's been developing here the last several years, mm -hmm. um, both because of those things I mentioned and a lot of the founders, VCs, venture capitalists like to hang out at the club. Mm -hmm. So 11 was in the crypto conversation without being a direct participant. And we made a conscious decision that we wanted to be a direct participant uh, in the space. Interesting. So now I, I've been in crypto for a while. And like you said, I dive, I dive really deep. And there was one time um, in 2017 where there was a couple of big uh, time companies uh, like Overstock.com that started accepting Bitcoin payments um, and Wikipedia started accepting the donations. But for some reason in 2017, they just didn't have a lot of transaction volume. There was not a lot, a lot of people that were no one wants to get rid of their Bitcoin. Right. So what why are what are the benefits of, of buying, like, for example, something at the 11 club or uh you know uh, a condo uh, what are the benefits of using crypto i think the benefits are a lot of our customers and guests have most of their assets in crypto so as opposed to them exchanging it for usd it is a easier transaction to directly link their wallet into our systems and pay using crypto um, probably it uh is faster maybe reduces transactions fee and i think it's pretty cool it's convenient yeah i think yeah. that's mostly i it think it, i think that's they it they can say yeah. i bought uh you know my condo with bitcoin and i think it's a cool thing for you too and your brand the fact that you're accepting this kind of freedom transaction medium uh for the world so like what's your favorite part like uh personally i like the censorship resistance of yep. cryptocurrency i do too yeah and the fact that no one can control it. is that what you like i like that a lot i don't like being told what to do i don't like being kicked out of places for because i have a different belief than someone necessarily who decides i like decentralization 
as a theory. But I just like that the opportunity uh, for um, people all over the world, I mean, especially where they have mass currency inflation um, to be able to have an alternative. Yeah. So, I mean, on the topic of inflation, I know it's getting out of hand, even uh, in the United States right now. Uh, if you look at Google Trends or any pretty much anything else, people are wising up and trying to learn about inflation uh, for the first time in like the past 94 years. So being a person that's gone through different businesses that really understands finance um, and obviously you got into XRP in 2013, so you know, you know what you're doing. Um, okay, I was lucky with that one. <laughs> <laughs> everyone says they're lucky in yeah. cryptocurrency, but you, you know, you did it, right? So you know, maybe for somebody that's a little bit wealthy, right? Let's, let's start with that and then we'll go for some less net worth. What would be for the wealthy person, the best hedge against inflation in the next, let's say three to five years? I think that um, Bitcoin is probably the safest, easiest. It's, you know, very liquid. Um, I think there's a huge market for it. So I think Bitcoin is a great option for someone maybe with a longer outlook. I would look at apartments and, um, you know, people always need a place to live. And uh, as the replacement cost of the buildings go up and as inflation sets in, you know, rents rise and over time, you know, you'll make money buying apartments. Yeah, I like it. Um, so longer time horizon apartments, uh, you know, more liquid, uh, easy of trans ease of use and transaction Bitcoin, which is interesting because you didn't say you know, XRP or an altcoin. So you think Bitcoin's a hedge against monetary inflation? I think Bitcoin is the safest in terms of um, expected return. I think with some of the altcoins, you can you can possibly have a much larger return, but you may lose some money. Where I think in Bitcoin over time, you will make money. It won't be the, the highest performing um, coin but i think you'll do very well it's safe it's the most liquid it has the most infrastructure it has the biggest brand it's I, actually censorship resistant yes i i agree with you i like it all right and then maybe for the smaller person maybe their net worth is less than 50k 100k uh what would be the best hedge against inflation again i think that bitcoin is probably the best hedge there um and uh you know it's it's a different sort of asset but nfts are an interesting choice also for wealth growth and and being able to mint a project and for a thousand dollars and have it turn into several hundred thousand is really a unique opportunity that a lot of people have experienced over the last couple of years and it's um there's not that many places that you could get that dramatic of an increase as some of these nft projects have provided that's you know that's why I say to my audience all the time it's like an asymmetrical bet you can only lose the amount you put in but the the reward is exponential um, and there's not a lot of bets like that you know in traditional finance or anything happening now and for the people that don't necessarily believe in crypto I mean you're hearing it from somebody with more credibility right I'm I'm young but he he's been around the block um, and he clearly just said you know hedge against inflation for lower net worth and higher net worth individuals still is Bitcoin. And it's interesting that, you know, gold's not even in the conversation. Do you think uh, gold might be a good uh, hedge against inflation? I think it could be, but it's not in my current thinking yeah. right now. I just, um, it doesn't excite me at the moment. Doesn't mean that I'm right, but I'm not thinking about gold. Yeah, I don't think anybody's think about gold. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole thing, right? Moving forward, I like it. So talked about crypto, talked about your history. Very interesting history. Um, let's get into the let's get into the mint a little bit. Let's talk about the mint because okay. I, I I research crypto deep and I've bought NFTs and I know how the you know how it works and in the NFT space there are a lot of weird projects right. There's a lot of uh, people taking advantage of others uh, and stuff like that. So what separates your NFT from the bunch? So when we set out to do our own NFT, um, we really you know thought a lot about it. And it was very important to us, number one, that we um, entered the space authentically, um, genuinely, respectfully. And that means not taking the normal business practice that we have in a nightclub or developing a hotel and thinking that we could apply the same strategies to an NFT project. It's radically different, as, as I've learned. Yeah. 
one of the most exciting things about this NFT uh, community and being involved in the project is you learn so much. It's evolving uh, so quickly. Everyone's kind of new to it. Even the, the old, old OGs are a couple yeah. of years in, you know, um, but it's a different way of doing it. It's it's you really have to be community focused yeah. and um, think about utility that you can offer uh, your community and and really, um, you know, it's it's exciting. So that's where we started. We started number one with thinking about our community of who it would be. We have our in real life community that very exciting. I think we'll be able to onboard a lot of people that never had an NFT that will join Web3 through their first purchase of the 11 Captains Club. And I think that we, um, you know, really wanted to think about the utility, what we can offer uh, folks that purchase this NFT. Uh, we also um, put a big focus in the artwork. We have different rarities. So that's certainly a component to it. Um, and we needed to put together a great team also. Uh, folks that had uh, been there and done it, we partnered with Horizon Labs, which is a Web3 development company, which is helping us with our smart contract and a lot of kind of thinking through what our uh, roadmap should be. Um, we brought on a uh, former creative director of Skechers, who is now the creative director 11 Crypto, a gentleman, John Massé. And we uh, partnered also with Greg Norman Jr., who had done a project called Boonji as part of Jupiter Labs, who's part of our team also. So we really put together um, my partners from the 11 brand with a Web3, with creatives, with marketing to create a large team that's hyper-focused on delivering value to our community. Yeah, and I mean the one thing I saw um, for the people that are watching this video, they the Discord's small. I mean, I've seen people with far less credibility, far less utility with bigger Discord. So if you guys are looking for something that's undervalued, you know, this is the, one of the metrics I talk about on my channel all the time. It's like, look, um, try to find like something that's really useful, but it hasn't been talked about yet. And this is why we're here. And um, one of the other things I thought was very interesting is that you're not doing the bonding curve with the mints. So you guys are doing just one ETH through the board. Yes. Which I, I like a lot. Yep. Um, and it's randomized and you have 200 unique characteristics, um, you know, that's random. Exactly. So it holds kind of like the collector's value, uh, like the rarity element, which is really good. And then I think the most important um, by far um, is the fact that you're integrating the 11 brand um, and you get access to, for example, like private clubs, uh, club events, right? Yep. Absolutely. I mean, we were really excited to see the evolution of NFTs go from strictly art to offering utility. Obviously, Board Ape Yacht Club has been uh, leading the charge in a lot, lot of ways uh, in terms of utility that they offer um, to their holders. Um, but we were really excited to see the success of Gary Vee's Fly Fish Club, yep. Lynx Dow, you know, some of these in real life uh, businesses that were, um, you know, NFTs utilized to access in real life businesses. Um, we have an existing in real life business. Um, we don't have to go build it. We don't, our holders don't have to wait years until it's ready to enjoy. Uh, we have the asset and the idea of bringing more people into the family, uh, having more people that are just part of the 11 um, that are going to contribute by giving ideas and will influence the direction of the 11 brand um, was really exciting to us. So let me slow it down a little bit. Let's get a little, a really deep into this. Um, so guys, by the way, before we jump forward, uh, follow the Discord, okay? He's giving away 11 cases of yes. 11 vodka. Exactly. Like the video, leave a comment, follow him on Twitter. Again, undervalued by social metrics, but overvalued by credibility. This is exactly what you need to look for to get your hands on something that could be worth something in the future. Now, again, I'm a very practical person, okay? Uh, I see all these uh, big collections and a lot of them are like very artistic based and uh, in some cases random. Um, and like you just said, I just wanna hit home on it for, for some people that don't understand. Actual business owner, 
with something actually useful. He knows how to curate people together. He has nightclub. He's been doing it for years. Real credibility, right? And now what you're doing is you're capturing that value with something that they could resell in the future. Correct. That, that's beautiful in my eyes. Uh, I like it a lot. Now, let's say I resell it. How does the ro royalties work? Do you have a royalty system? So the royalty system has not been finalized. There will be a royalty. Um, we don't know the exact amount today, Yeah. but we will have it. It will be public and it's we'll fair. share with the community. Yeah, it's fair. And so imagine, you know, and, and just to be clear, they get access to the private uh, events as well as, uh, is there anything else? Yes. Yeah, so shortly after Mint, we're going to have an exclusive 11 Captain Club party with a big time performer. That will only be for 11 Captain Club holders. Uh, it will be zero cost to the holders. And, uh, and subsequently, there's a lot more in real life utility yeah. um, that we can offer, um, that we plan to offer. We just really want to hear from the community exactly how they want us, uh, what they want us to deliver. Mm -hmm. And if we could deliver it, we will deliver it. And another thing that was interesting is that you actually uh, hosted the whale uh, party in 2021. Yes. So again, he knows how to bring people with credibility together and you get access to this um, through this NFT, which will likely, I, I, you know, we're speculating here, but I think it will retain its value if not increase over time. Um, so that it's not really a loss uh, if you look at it from that perspective, because a person like me, like I would like to network with whales, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and it sounds like, you know, this is where you're headed. Uh, is that correct? Absolutely. And not only uh, we're planning on delivering uh, unique in real life utility, I think that's going to be what really distinguishes it from other projects. But we are also planning on offering Web3 util uh, utility. Initially, there will be a private server on Discord for 11 Captain Club holders. So like, as you mentioned, there's a pretty interesting group of people in our community currently. Um, some business titans, politicians, celebrities, pretty beautiful people. So if you want to be part of that group. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely recommend it, guys. No, but, but we are going to do, uh, we have ambitions on with that Web3 um, and, and offering utility for people all over the world. So even if they are not physically in Miami, um, which there will be other 11s and other cities in the future, currently there's only in Miami, there will be utility for holders no matter where they live. Very interesting. I like it a lot. So I think I pretty much hit everything. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about? No, I think the most important thing is that we are entering the NFT space, you know, very respectfully. Uh, we want to kind of uh, be community focused, listen to everyone, um, you know, give our community what they want and really just try our best to be, uh, you know, good um, participants in the ecosystem. Good. All right. So I got a couple of uh, rapid fire questions here for you. All right. It's going to be fun, um, you know, right off the top of the head. Uh, but let me cap it up really quickly. Their website is um, 11's, uh, 11 cap, uh, Captain Club. Yeah, it's 11crypto.io. 11crypto.io. OK, yeah. So uh, and it's launching April 27th. Yes. One ETH uh, to mint yep. uh, and you get signature Miami swag, top tier access to private captain events. And then you said you're going to offer Web3 utility in the future. Yes. All right, guys. Personally, in my opinion, uh, like I said, a high utility, uh, low, low social. And we're going to try to bring that up a little bit. Um, but I think that's the recap. Let's go into the rapid questions and then we can conclude this uh, interview here. OK, ready? Ready. All right. Ready? ETH or BTC? ETH. Interesting. Favorite altcoin besides Ether BTC? Solana. Solana, okay. Uh, best, best hedge against inflation? We kind of talked about this. Apartments and Bitcoin. All right. Um, does Bitcoin hit 100K this year? Next year. Next year? Seriously, next year? I think next year. 2023. 2023, okay. Um, and what club do you go to besides your own? Club Space. Club Space, all right. Short term versus long term investment? Um, Bitcoin, short term. Uh, Long-term, 
apartments. <laughs> it's very clear, guys. Those are good answers. All right. Are you going to give uh, Mary Suarez an NFT? I am going to give Mayor Suarez political contributions. And if he wants an NFT, I hadn't thought about that. I should give Mayor Suarez an NFT. You should get him in the group, man. Uh, which brings me to my next question. Are you going to give me an NFT? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I had to put him on the spot to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then last question. Do you believe in digital real estate? Absolutely. And do you think there's going to be like an 11 club in, in the metaverse? I think there will be an 11 club in the metaverse. All right, great. I mean, I think that concludes uh, the interview here. Uh, final thoughts or questions? Concerns? No, really excited to see Miami kind of evolving into a world-class city. I was born and raised here. Love this city. There's amazing people here, amazing restaurants. For all of you who aren't in Miami, come visit us. Yeah. Consider living here. And uh, really excited about direction we're heading all together yeah we're taking over guys if you're in another part of the world miami's taking over move to miami now just move yeah. to miami just make it happen uh if you got 20 percent of the, you know open so take advantage of that come it's beautiful out here man it is the, the weather's amazing yes. is that why is that why you decided to stay here um i decided to say i love the water yeah. if i don't see the water i go into like this depression thing the captain is helping us navigate the water. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Guys, go to the Discord. It'll be in a, uh, the link will be below. Uh, he's giving away cases of 11 vodka. Catch you guys in the next video. All right. That was great. All right.